This video is brought to you by The Craft Channel in association with FEMO. For more information visit www.fimo.com. Hello and welcome to The Crafts Channel in association with FEMO. I'm here with Corinne Brad today and we're going to be making some home decorations like this lovely mobile. So how do I get started Corinne? Well Abby, what we've got here is what's called FEMO Air. Now it's an air drying clay. Most okay. people are familiar with FEMO Soft which is the, the oven bakeable clay. Yeah. The FEMO Air um, comes in handy little packs like this. Yep. Um, there's six colours in this range because this is the light range and it means that you can make something like a mobile which it, it, it's almost like, um, you know the funky foam that you get the kids play with? Yeah. It's that sort of weight. Yeah. Um, this can you buy bigger packets if you can I wanted get bigger to make a yeah, bigger You can project. get double sized packets okay. of the FEMO light. But I mean, if you're going to get all the different colours, this comes in green, blue, yellow, red, black and white. Mm -hmm. And you can um, mix them to make can, all yeah, the colours. Yeah, they're fully intermixable. I mean, okay. this green here has actually been, rather than it be the green in the packet, which is quite a bright green, this has been mixed with blue and yellow. Yeah. Um, so you can get a whole range of colours, you know, depending on your decor. Um, the other thing I was going to say also about the FEMO Air Clay is the light version. There's also a basic version, which is like a potter's clay, so it's very smooth. Yep. It's the same sort of consistency as this, but it's okay. not light. Mm -hmm. It's like a proper porcelain ceramic clay. And there's also the FEMO Natural, which is almost like a chunky um, wood pulpy clay, but you can get some really great effects with it. Oh, great. All of these are suitable for children. Okay. Um, all of them, they don't stain your clothes wash your hands, you can wash your work surface, mm. and they all dry completely within 24 hours. What I like about it is that you can make your own colours just by blending yeah, yeah. just different well, sizes Well, you can see with the mobile, colour. I've actually mixed the, the royal blue with some white, and okay. then I mixed it with a bit more green, you know, to get like a sagey mm -hmm. green colour. Um, when you take the clay out of the packet, what you may find is it's very sticky. When it's fresh out of the packet, it, it is sticky. You yep. need it sticky, you know, so that it hasn't dried in the packet. I tend to get a bit of clay out, the amount that I'm going to use, and just leave it on the side for about an hour, yeah. so that the surface dries out, and then that way it doesn't stick to your hands quite so much. Yeah, I see that you covered it before with a wet wipe. Is yeah, that just because to make of, well, sure it just really because of the studio much. light, so it doesn't dry out too okay. much because it is quite warm in here. Um, now the best way I've found with these moulds. Now these are a selection of moulds. These are very flexible, very hard wearing moulds, okay. also made by Fimo. Um, we've got the seaside, um, the seashell motifs here. There's also one here, Spring Shapes, yep. which is these lovely decorative hearts and flowers. Okay, you can and get I think them there's about, of... Yeah, there's about 16 different designs of mould. Um, they work with all the Fimo clays, the light, the basic, the natural, and also with the oven baking clays. Okay. But you can't put them in the oven. Yeah. What you need to do is you need to mould your clay into it, release it from it, and bake it separately. Because although they're heat resistant, I mean, you can put melted chocolate in this and it will work really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can use it as an ice cube tray, you can use it with soap, okay. um, jelly. So it's, it's a bit of a, it's, it's good to have in your stash, really. Oh, definitely, yeah, because, yeah if you've got a, a set of things. designs that you really, really like. Because the other thing is you will find that it will turn virtually inside out so that you can release your clay yeah. and then just pop back into shape. Okay. And I tend to clean these with a nail brush and some soap and water mm -hmm. just to get it free. And dry them out as well. And dry them out, yeah. If you're going to put chocolate in a mould, to make sure it's 100% dry, because if you've got a little bit of water in there, you'll get like a dull, you won't get that nice shiny chocolate effect. Get some cotton wool and just clean it out with a cotton wool pad, because okay. that will absorb all the water. Yep. Now this clay has, is, is dry enough, you know, it's not sticking to my hands at all. Mm -hmm. This is dry enough to use straight in a mould. So what I'm going to do is I shall use it in the starfish mould, because the starfish mould looks quite intricate, but it's actually not that bad at all. If you put a lump of clay in and start pushing it in, yeah, the great thing about the them being transparent is you can see where you're putting yeah, it. Yeah, you can see if you've got air bubbles in there, you can see if you've got problems and there's, there's bits that you've missed. Mm. Yeah. You don't need that much either, no, you're not you don't using need all your clay for that. No. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take away the excess with the thumb from here. Okay. Just check it's in there properly. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a blade, which I've mislaid, here we go. You know the, the cutting blades that yeah. you tend to use, again, with Fimo Soft, the oven baking okay. clay? And if you just run that across the back of your shape, that will take off all the excess clay. Yep. So you see you've got lots of leftovers there, so you're... Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's completely reusable. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you would probably get three shapes out of something like that, this amount of clay. Yeah. And then all you do, once you're happy that your outline is clear... So do you leave it to dry in that or not? You pop um, it out. No, I don't tend to. What I tend to do, because the thing is, if you're making more than one shape at the same time, you might want to make several at the same time. Yeah. I tend to pop it out 
of course. Very carefully like that. And then I'll put it on a sheet of cardboard because what that will do is that will absorb the water from the back of it yep. while the air is drying the top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when that's completely dry, you can sand these down. I mean, I've got some sandpaper. This is just a medium grit sandpaper. Yeah. Um, and it, it will take the rough edges off it. It okay. will flatten the back of it completely. Mm -hmm. um, if you're using very wet clay, you might want to use some sort of release agent in there. Okay. Um, there's two ways you can use it. Well, in fact, there's three ways thinking about it with a release agent. Yep. Um, first of all, what you can use, if you haven't got anything else available, baby powder, just yeah. normal, normal talcum powder. Sprinkle a little, little bit into your mould and brush it around with a soft brush. You know, so you just, you, you only need literally a fraction of it. It's not going to come out now, You haven't it? got it open. It will either be, no, I have. <laughs> I did that trick the other day, looked at it as I squeezed it and got it in the face. So you only do a little bit, get a soft paintbrush and just dust it around that mould, yeah? It smells nice. Tip out the excess and then take your clay and press it into the mould. You're just using blue clay there yeah. to... I'm not going to trim the back you. of this, I just want to show you how then it comes out and you'll have the... There'll be talcum powder on it. Yeah. It won't affect the drying at all. Um, and to be honest, you can just mm. take it off with a finger. So you can use that. There's also metallic powders. These metallic powders, these work really beautifully. Again, same thing. Tap it in there. These come in gold or silver or copper. Okay. Give it a good dust round. So you don't need anything to stick that on to the Fimo then? No, it will just stick. Now this, I've got, I've put too much powder in there. I'm just going to tap that over there. You could always do that and brush it onto, back into the pot. Oh yeah, to yeah. waste any. And then just, let's say, pop this into the mould. And when you lift it out of the mould, you've got that beautiful metallic. Oh. You can also do it with gold leaf. I haven't got time That's to show really you with the pretty. gold leaf today, but you can see what I've done yeah. on this one here. It creates that kind of It's a cracked effect. effect. Well, the yeah. reason that is, is because the clay will stretch, but the gold leaf won't. Okay. So simply take a ball of clay, put a piece of gold leaf on it, and then push it into the mould. Okay. And that, again, will help you release it. So there's numerous things you can do with it. And, and once it's dry, I mean, this, this is a sheet. I've just broken that. This is a sheet that's completely dry. Yeah. But you can also cut it with a pair of scissors. Okay. So if you want to clean up the edges, you can either do it with sandpaper, um, you can do it with a pair of scissors, um, this is a sort of leaf effect on here, on these flat shapes that I was going to make another mobile with. Yeah. So have a play around with it, but the light is great for mobiles. Yeah, it's really, I really, really, good. really do. I like this gold yeah. and the silver as well, I think. And here you've varnished it, so this could go outside. Yeah, that can go outside. If you varnish it, I mean, Fimo do a range of varnishes. They do a, a satin and a gloss. Mm -hmm. This is a gloss varnish here. Yeah, that looks um, like a Yeah, it does, does make it waterproof. The other thing I just want to show you, this is a natural range. Yeah. This is really quite tough. That looks like and it, it looks like terracotta, it? yeah. So you could decorate plant pots with it. If you let it dry partially and then bend it into the curve, yeah. so that it dries on the curve, then it can stick onto your terracotta And then, of pot. course, just glue it on there. Yeah, but play around with it. It's great yeah. for kids, um, but you can get some really professional-looking results with it as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Karen. That's all we have time for here today at the Crafts Channel, but visit femo.com for more information.